Turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 46. Psalms 46, and we'll take up a couple of verses of Scripture. In the book of Psalms, chapter 46, and we'll look at verses 1 and 2. In Psalms 46, in verse 1, the psalmist said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Man. Therefore, therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Father, I ask you, Lord, to, to give unction into the Word of God and to this vessel that's here tonight. Lord, that you know the needs that are represented in our midst tonight, God. You yes. know where each of us are. You know our standing, our rising, our sitting. And Heavenly Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would have your way and your will. And Lord, help me to lift Jesus Christ high and exalted. And Lord, that we can make much of your dear Son. We'll give praise to you for we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And amen. You can be seated. I want to preach to you about refuge. There's all kinds of things that people will run to for refuge. I know before I got saved, I used to run to alcohol for refuge, and it's, it's a false foundation, I can assure you that. Uh, they, they call it Budweiser, but it never made anybody wiser. Everybody I know that drank it becomes stupider, amen? But many people have refuge. Some run to... Uh, their mama or daddy and you know I understand that my folks have helped me out and who what parent wouldn't help their son or daughter amen but it's the wrong refuge in which we need to go to first and the psalmist here said God is our refuge and many if you were to ask even tonight here say what is or who is your ref refuge or what do you uh, turn to for comfort and help what is the refuge that you lean on and about everybody would say oh preacher the Lord's my refuge but it doesn't matter what we say it matters on who your refuge is I was at a job uh, uh, today and a guy come to me and he said that whole room is trimmed out and nothing needs to be done to it it's ready and he left and only half of it was done now he says it's all done but what the truth of the matter is is only part of it was done and part of it wasn't done correctly now uh, you say well what's the big deal with that and how's that different a lot of people do the same thing they say God is my refuge the Lord is my refuge. Many people, you'd say, do you love the Lord? And they'll say, yes, I love the Lord, but they have no time for Him. They have no time for service. They don't want to talk to Him. They don't want to be around Him. They don't be around His people. And uh, then, But you ask them and say, are you a Christian? Yes, sir, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. But they don't want to have fellowship with God's people. They don't want to have fellowship with God. They don't want to, but they, they want the name and the title of Christian. So... I asked again, who or what is the refuge that you turn to for comfort and help? Because everybody needs help, and everybody needs comfort. And you find comfort and refuge from somewhere. Some may find it false comforts and uh, false refuges. There's all kinds of them, and I'm sure that if I would sit and name the ones that I know, I guarantee you, you could name some I've never even heard of, amen, because everybody has refuges that we go to. Many will say God is their help, and yet they won't come to Him that He can help. And that's not a new thing. It's been going on. It was going on in Jesus' day. The, Bible, the Lord said in Matthew chapter 22, I think it is, in verse number 2, in Matthew 22 and 2, He said, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And I want you to know there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb one day. And God's saying, All who are come invited, you're invited. You're part of it. You're, you're the bride. God wants to make you the bride. And a lot of people hear the call. A lot of people know they're called and they keep putting it off. And uh, it tells this parable and He says it's a parable. And when God gives you a parable, that's what He calls 
calls it. He don't call uh, personal names and give real people and to the story. But he said the kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. And that's the way it's been going on for years. I mean, he said many are called, but few are chosen. And God's knocked on heart's doors. I bet everybody in here had the Lord deal with you about your condition of your soul many times before you actually got saved. I know He did with me. God dealt with me a lot. I mean, every time conviction would hit me, I'd run from God as hard as I could. And I don't know why I would run from God. Why do you run from somebody that loves you? Why do you run? Because light expels the darkness. Because the light of God's glory lets you see yourself how you are. And when you see yourself in the eyes of a holy God, you're not going to like the picture that you see. Now, God didn't come to flatter you. He didn't come to tell you, give you a false hope and a false assurance. He came to tell you that things is wrong, but he's able to make them right. He's a refuge. And they all, they would not come. And, but he didn't give up there. In verse 4 again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which were bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, and my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come into the marriage. But they made light of it. And a lot of people make light of the call for God. They say, oh, I ain't got time for God. I ain't got time right now. I'm busy doing this. I don't have time. I've had people tell me that whenever they get their kids raised, then they was going to get in church. I had a school teacher that I was working for years ago I was building, uh, hanging a uh, uh, addition on her house that she'd had framed, and, and we were working on it. And then I invited her to the house of God, and I gave her a gospel tract, and she said, I'm Presbyterian. And I said, Well, that's fine. Are you a saved Presbyterian? And she said, Well, that's personal. I said, I know. That's why I asked you in person Have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? She said, I've been baptized. And I said, I didn't ask you if you'd been baptized. I asked you if you'd been saved. And she said, Well, I don't think I'd be baptized if I wasn't saved. And I said, You'd be surprised. Amen. Is there come a point that you received Jesus Christ in? to your heart as your Lord and Savior and repented of sin and asked Him to be your God and your Savior. And she said, well, that's personal and I don't want to talk about it. And she said, I said, well, does your kids go to church anywhere? And she said, I don't force religion on my children. It's a principal of an elementary school, public school in Knoxville. She said, I don't force my children, uh, religion on my children. And I said, I just moved up to Maynardville. I said, they feel that way about secular education up there. And she just had a cow. She said, oh, you're going to cause them to be illiterate and they won't learn how to prosper. I said, yeah, but you're going to cause yours to be damned and burn in devil's hell. The thing you're concerned about is temporal and has to do with monetary things. The thing I'm trying to ask you is eternal and it has to do with eternal things. And uh, she would have fired me, but she liked to never found someone to do the trade that I did at that time. And, and uh, so I, I was able to finish my job. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of conversation. In Matthew 23 and 37, the Lord, that's not the only place that He had called folks. He said in Matthew 23 and 37, well, John's gospel said He came into His own and His own received Him not. But as many as receive Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them which believe on His name. Now, I know that you're in church, and most folks here belong to this local body of, uh, of believers, and, and I hope that you're saved, but I can't see your soul. And really, you and God are the only ones that know for sure that you're on the right foundation. You'd be surprised at the people that can fool me. I've had people fool me. And what have you done? Have you fooled me? My kids have fooled me sometimes. My grandkids have got over on me. Amen? And in things that I, I didn't think I could be fooled on. Things I didn't think the wool could be pulled over my eyes on. And yet, in my own home, I've been duped. So... It's easy to fool me sometimes, but you won't fool God any. Amen. He said this in verse 37 of Matthew 23. He said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would have I gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. 
Now, he didn't say that they could not because they were invited to come. He didn't say that, that they didn't have opportunity because opportunity was coming. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open up, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. So God has knocked and God has called. And, and many have heard the call and they know that God has dealt with them in a personal way. And they say, Well, not now, God, but later. That's very presumptuous to think that you're going to have a later. Marshall Boston's dad, uh, brother didn't think death would be knocking on his door. Tony preached an excellent message Sunday night about how that people that got up on a certain day, the bus driver of that bus never thought a thing in the world about the brakes given out on that car. The lady that the bus hit didn't think anything. She was just going to her destination. And she was just about her business like you were coming to church tonight. And boom, it happened. Death stepped in and snatched her right out of this world. Marshall Bost, his brother, got up. He finished his meal and turned to go pay and fell completely dead. Now, he's not dead now. He's much alive. But as we said early, pray for his family. They will miss him. We're the ones that saddened and, and miss our loved ones. But the Lord said, He said, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and you would not. And it amazes me how that, that God comes to us over and over and over again. But there is going to come a time when the Holy Spirit will draw back and friend, then you can't come to God. When, God. when there's a deadline that's crossed and when the Holy Spirit has been grieved that last time, when He's been quenched that last time, when He's, when he's reached a point that He will not knock. I know a lot of people preach salvation anytime, anywhere, any way you want it. But friend, you've got to come. He said, except the Father which sent me draw him, you can't come to me. Amen. Amen. Now, I know it's God's will to save more than it is ours to have our loved ones saved. he done everything possible that there is. I think about the rich man in hell. He said, oh, Abraham, Father Abraham, he said, send somebody back as a witness from the dead that believe if one rose from the dead. And he said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, though one rose would raise from the dead, they won't hear it. And one did rise from the grave, the Lord Jesus Christ, and people still won't hear it. Amen. And and, and in Matthew there, in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, down, it said that they made light of it. And you'd be surprised of, of some of the, the mockery I've heard when I'm witnessing to folks and trying to draw them in. I remember Tony and I was talking to a man down on Broadway at the direct gas station many years ago. And we were telling him it was by the grace of God that you could get saved. And he said some very vulgar things about the grace of God. And Tony looked at me and he said, pull back, brother. You may cause him to, I think it's you. He said, pull back, brother. I think you're going to cause him to commit the unpardonable sin. Because he had done disgrace and despite and said some terrible things I'd never heard another individual say about the grace of God. And it, it was a sobering event to the point where Tony looked at me and said, let's back off. Amen. It, it amazes me. And so in our text in Psalms 46 and 1, the psalmist said, God is our refuge. In other words, this was a tried uh, harbor of of. Of, of safety that he's run to many times and he was able to go to God at times and he found a solace there. He found a, a refuge, a sure foundation in the Lord. He found out in hard times and in many diverse hardships that come in his life, dangers that had come and brokenness that had come, he found that God was a sure refuge no matter what the trouble is. He's that refuge that fits all. He said, not only is He my refuge, He's my strength. Amen. There's been things happening in my life I felt like I couldn't go on. There's been things that happened. I remember the death of my parents, the death of, of some of my loved ones and friends that had passed and it just had broken me up. But I knew that I'll see them again. 
I knew that they had faith in God and they had that like precious faith. And I knew where they went. They wasn't stepping out into the mystic unknown. They just simply went ahead to the destination that I'm heading as well. Because God was their refuge. And He was their trust. And He still is. And He's my refuge. The Lord Jesus Christ is my rock and shield. Amen. That's what the psalmist was saying. You know why he could say that the Lord is our refuge? Because He had like precious faith with those in his company and he had seen them have God as, his re- as their refuge. And they had together trusted God as their refuge and found out that it was able to hold not only him, but his companions as well. <laughs> Peter describes it in 2 Peter chapter 1. He said unto those that have obtained like precious faith through the righteousness of God our Savior. <laughs> Amen. And you say, oh, well, Jesus wasn't then. Sure He was. The Bible said in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. That's Elohim. (laughs) Amen. 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 You say, well, who is God? God is God. Amen. Amen. The Lord God Jehovah, the Lord Jesus Christ is God. Amen. Amen. God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. God is my refuge and a very present help in time of need, in time of trouble. Peter describes it this way in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. He said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. You see, God knows exactly how to provide. How to provide a way to escape. How to be able to rescue the perishing and care for the dying. God has a way to work. When you're on death's door, you can have the joy of the Lord as your strength. I've had that. I've been there. I was able to pray a prayer, not because I'm a great prayer warrior, not because I'm a great man. I just have a great God, amen, that's real in my soul. And it praise the Lord, He's never took me out and dropped me. He's been there in sickness. He's been there in in strength. He's been there in health. He's been there in poverty. He's been there in wealth. He's been all in all to me. But I'd come to death's door and and I I knew, I could feel death creeping up on me and I knew that I probably only had hours or maybe a day left. And I was able to pray this prayer. I said, Lord, I want to thank you for all the goodness that you've given me, for all the grace you've given me, for your abundant mercy. And I know even now you can speak healing and heal me and you can speak the word and this thing will be changed. But if you choose not to, i got no complaints. You've been better to me than I could be to myself. And then I got a phone call. (laughs) And it was God answering prayer. Amen. He tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 19. He said, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured. You know why the psalmist could say that God is my refuge? Because it's a foundation that that trouble can't. Though the waters flood in, can't overflow. Though the earth would quake, it can't destroy it or shake it. It's a sure foundation. (laughs) Nobody can get you off from it. Sister Dorothy, pray for Sister Dorothy uh, Odom. She, or uh, yeah, Odom, she had had uh, some tests done and on her, and she's feeling poorly tonight. So just pray that she'll heal up from that. And uh, but she would said, since I've been on the rock of my salvation, she said I've slid over that rock, all over that rock, but I ain't never slid off from it. And I said, Ed, man, you never will. That's right. You say, what foundation is that? Is the Lord of glory. He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured, having this seal. I'm glad I'm sealed. (laughs) I'm glad that I've been sealed with the Holy Ghost of God. Somebody told me years ago, he said, well, if you mess up, uh, the devil will snatch you off to hell. I said, the only way the devil could snatch me off to hell, he'd have to break the seal that God's got on me. And praise God, he'd have to be greater than the Holy Ghost of God to break the seal of the Spirit. He'd have to overcome the Son and the Father and since I know that's impossible I know I'm saved Amen. now to him that's able to keep you from falling and to present ye faultless you say faultless 
I talked to a gentleman today, and he said, you know, he's telling me about his aunt. He said, my aunt's a real Christian. He said, she's Pentecostal. I said, yeah. And he said, what's the difference in Pentecostal and Baptist? I said, well, some doctrinal things. I said, but they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and those that have received him as Lord and Savior uh, is just as saved as a Baptist that receives him as Lord and Savior. He said, aren't all the Pentecostals saved? I said, son, all the Baptists ain't saved. Amen. Amen. And I know that I, there's probably some Baptists that'll hear this and they'll make them mad as a devil and they'll twist what I say and try to make it, make it sound like I, I said you could lose it after I done said that it's impossible for Satan to snatch me out of God's hands. And someone said, well, you can jump out. I ain't going to be. Why would I want to? <laughs> but you ain't can't. How are you going to jump higher than he can reach? <laughs> But I was talking to him, and, and, and he said, oh, she lives a very strict life. And I said, well, that's good. I said, as long as it's for the right motive. And he said, yeah, she was uh, hoping that her righteousness was enough to, to, to keep God satisfied. And I said, well, that's good. You want to satisfy the Lord. But he was saying that so she could make it in. And I said, you won't never make it in on your own righteousness. I said, what it is, man wasn't just a little bit lost. He was completely depraved. He wasn't just a little bit sinful. He's completely rotten to the core. He didn't need just a wiping off. He needed a, a regeneration. He needed a new birth. And that's what the Lord... You see, the righteousness that He requires, that God requires, is the righteousness that His righteousness requires Him to require. And He died to provide it. Only the righteousness of God is going to make it. And when you enter into that, He makes you a new creature. The psalmist had found out that it was a tried stone and a sure foundation. He found out that God was able to do exceeding abundant above all that he asked or thought. He found out that God was a God of His Word, that He said what He meant and He meant what He said. In our text, He said this, He said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. If you look back over Israel's history, you'll see them defeating people they were outnumbered by. You'll see them, that God is who it was that fought for them and fought, and fought for them and, and raised up courage of men and made valiant men and made the enemy to quake in fear at, right before them. God put a spirit of fear into these people and they started fighting one another and, yeah, and, other, and yeah. turned and left all of their stuff. Yeah, they did. Done that, I think in 67 he done that too. <laughs> Amen, 1967. Yeah. In Psalms 46 he said, Therefore will not we fear. I'd like to say that I never fear, but the fact of it is there's been times that I've feared but only for a short period of time. I only feared until the Spirit of God whispers sweet peace to you. I only feared until I can stand on my refuge. I only feared until I can look unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of my faith. I only feared when I had my eyes off my Savior. Like Peter when, when the Lord come walking up and, on, in the storm and, and He's walking across the, on the water and they thought they had seen a ghost. Well, it was the Lord. And He said, Lord, if it be Thee, bid me to come. And He said, Come. Peter gets out of the boat and as long as he's looking at the Lord, he's walking on water. He took his eyes off the Lord and down he went. But it was a short trip because he said, Lord, save me! And immediately, <laughs> and immediately, you see, he's a sure foundation. He said, therefore, why? Because God is my refuge, therefore I will not fear. Because God is my strength, Will not we fear? Because God is a very present help. Will not we fear? Because it is God that fights for. It's God that worketh in you. Both the will and the do of His good pleasure. So He says in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Amen. It's God which worketh in you. Amen. And it's because of the precious faith. In Psalms 46 and 2, He said, Therefore will not we fear. Listen. Listen to what he says here in Psalms 
I've written the Scripture down wrong, but it's Psalm 62. In Psalm 62, here's why David didn't have to fear. He said, Hear my cry, O God, in verse 1 of Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in the tabernacle, in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. You see, it was a tried foundation, a true foundation. It is one that had sustained him in, in perilous times. It was one he knew that would stand the test. In Psalm 62, in verse 1, he said, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. David had like precious faith in the Lord. David had that relationship. You know how you know you got like precious faith? Because it's not your husband's or your wife's. It's not mama's or daddy's. It's not a churchual thing. It's not something you have to get a group thing going. It's between you and God. Amen. You know your Redeemer liveth. Yeah. You know that you know Him. He saved you. He called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Amen. He's transformed you. There's no way you could be blind and receive your sight and not know that you can see. There's no way you can be saved and not know it. Therefore, He said, let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord. That man, we ought to say so in here, out of here, and everywhere we go. We ought to lift up our voice as a trumpet and tell it far and tell it near that Jesus Christ is coming back. Tony brought out in Sunday school Sunday morning, he said, I believe this is the generation that's going to see the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then I said, hey, man, I believe if I don't die untimely death, I believe that I still got enough years left to be able to see the coming of the Lord. And I hope and pray it's tonight. There's not one thing I got to go back to the house for. There's not one thing I got to go to the store for, the bank for, or anywhere else for. Amen. Amen. Everything that I need is in Him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He said in, here in Psalm 62 and 5, He said, My soul... Isn't it funny how they talk to their soul? You know, I used to think, I'd talk to myself and people say, that's a sign of craziness. I get to reading in the Psalms, man, and they talk to, they talk to the Lord and they, He talked to His soul. He said, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. You see, Sometimes what I do is look at my situation and look at all the possibilities and say, hey, I ain't going to make it. Sometimes we want to look at the natural and try to judge the supernatural. Sometimes we want to look at the natural and try to judge somebody's heart. Man, we don't even know our own heart, our own heart at times, a lot of times, amen? He said, My soul wait thou only up upon God, for my expectation is for Him. Who's your refuge? Who do you really look to? Amen. Husbands, they look to their wife for comfort. And, and, and that's so, that's your soulmate. And you ought to love one another. And you ought to, you ought to look to one another. You ought to comfort one another. You, you, fat, sh uh, uh, iron sharpeneth iron. But that's not my refuge. My refuge is in the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's able to quiet my spirit. He's able to, to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. He's able to speak peace unto my soul. It's the Lord. That's why we must go to Him. That's why we must seek the Lord early. That's why we must cast all of our care upon Him. For He careth for us. Amen. He said, My soul wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. He only is my rock. It's not Him and my ability to work. It's not Him and my bankroll. It's not Him and my savings. It's not Him and, and my devices. It's Him or I sink. If Jesus Christ can't get me there, I'm not going. 
Amen. I don't have a plan B. Don't, don't need one. That's exactly right. Amen. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father. You know how Tony said he can go to Haiti for the Lord Jesus Christ? And how that he, he can go there and feel safe and go there knowing that everything's going to be alright because God is his refuge Amen. and strength. You know how he knows he's going to make it? Because God is his refuge Amen. and strength. Amen. You know, before the devil can do anything to you unless you give him an open door, <laughs> before the devil can do anything to you, he's got to get permission from God. Amen. Devil just can't attack and do something to you unless you give him place. The Bible said give no place. to. So if he tells me not to do something, it tells me that it's possible for me to give place to the devil. And I've did that before. I've gave place to the devil before. Now he didn't call it a place when I was giving it to him and I didn't realize I was really giving it to him when I did, but boy, once he got it. I realized I'd given place to the devil. And you say, how'd he get that back? Through much fighting and much prayer. Amen. He said here, he said, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. The devil's come to me before and said, You've messed up. You've did this. You didn't do this. You, did, you should have did this and you didn't do it. You should have done this and, and you failed. You ever have that? I got, I'm working on a message. If God gives me opportunity, I'm going to preach it here Sunday. But it's some of the attacks that Satan uses. And he attacks. And the battle usually is right here in the mind. Amen. Preached the message years ago, and I'm not the only one that used this. I'm sure that God used it from the first one that penned it in the Word of God all the way down. But sin begins with a look. Amen. Amen. And um, or it can begin with a thought, or it can begin. Somebody said, "What was it? Sow a seed, reap a action, or sow a seed to meet your need." No, that's that. That's a different seed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different doctrine. Amen. Anyway, let me finish this. I'm about done. He said, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be moved. I wonder what it is that moves us. I wonder what it is. The psalmist David said this in verse 11 of Psalm 62. He said, God has spoken once, twice, have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Let me tell you something. There's some things that I can't do of myself and that I'm not good enough and I'm not smart enough and I'm not any of enough of these things that man says you have to have to be able to do things. But I tell you what, power belongs to my God. And if God puts it on my heart to endeavor to do it and by faith I accept that and say, Yes, Lord, God is my defense and He's my strength and He's my fortress. And He's my power. It's not of me. And it's not of you. If God should mark iniquity, who would be able to stand? Amen? In Psalms 23, the psalmist was able to say this. He said, the, the Lord is my shepherd. You may tell you what a shepherd does. He watches out for the sheep, but he leads his sheep. Let me ask you, what's your refuge and who are you following? Who you're following will reveal much of who your refuge is. Amen. Some people have a refuge of lies. And those won't hold you. Nope. They may quiet the gangsayers and they may suffice some people. But before, listen, when God is your shepherd, when the Lord is your shepherd and He's your refuge, then He's going to be your shepherd. And He's going to guide you. David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Because the Lord is His shepherd. Amen. I'm going to go where He leads me. The song, I think the songwriter said, Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. 
Listen, the will of God won't lead you where the grace of God can't keep you. Right. Amen. 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 Closer. All the way. You got to follow Him. You see, He said, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. If you follow the Lord, He's going to direct your paths. Amen. Amen. He said that the Lord, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy path. <laughs> Why? Because I'm acknowledging Him and letting Him shepherd me. Amen. Therefore, He's my refuge. You know why He's my refuge? Because He's my shepherd. Amen. That's good. Amen. He leadeth me beside the still waters. You know, sheep won't drink Water that's moving. Right. He's scared of everything. Sheep has no natural defense. You can take a wolf eating a sheep and one of them will run 20 feet and run around circles. <laughs> oh gosh, oh gosh. They don't have sharp teeth. They can't defend themselves. The only defense that they have other than the shepherd is they got a big thick wool. And that don't do much when the wolf's there. The wolf attacks two sheep, one will run just right on top of the hill where he can be seen. He didn't got brains enough to even hide. And run around circles, you know. The wolf say, I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> After I finish your brother off. And that's the way Satan does, man. He attacks, but when you're following the shepherd, he watches out for the wolves. God sent me as under shepherd to, and he sent others here to, to labor in this this ministry with this church and He's put you here to, to labor in the ministry with the gospel. And each one of us has a part and, and we ought to be able to say, Lord, here am I, use me. Amen? Amen. I remember when Tony and I was playing in a gospel group years and years ago and he said, man, God's calling me to preach. And I said, yeah, me too. And I'm not going to. <laughs> And he said, no, I mean, God's calling me. I said, I know, and I, I ain't going to. And, and I tried not to. I really did. I said, Lord, I'll just play guitar and be quiet in the back. And he said, no. He said, you're going to preach. I said, you need a college, man. You need somebody. I said, you know, you've seen my report cards. <laughs> you need somebody else. But God didn't let up. He said the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. The psalmist said, because the Lord is my refuge and strength, He said, we will not fear. You mean, 1 John 4.18, He tells us this. He said, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. When you're loving God right, and you, you can trust Him right. When you're walking in, in following the shepherd, and you're abiding in His grace, and you're abiding in fellowship with Him, He can tell you to do anything, and you'll do it. When your child is, is at a point to where they really trust you, they can be in a tall tree, and you can say, jump to daddy, and they'll do it. Now you, if you have failed them somewhere, and or they have fallen somewhere and they, they learn not to trust you, but a child will trust somebody that they know that's protected them. And, you know, amen. You tell a child you're going to do something over and over and over and don't do it, then they'll know not to believe you. But God's never told you something that He failed you on. And when you're following the shepherd, you're abiding in His love. And you can trust Him. I remember uh, my brother-in-law one time, I had a motorcycle that my dad just gave me. It blowed me away. He gave me a 750 chopper. And I rolled over my sister's house and showed it to her, and her husband was there. And I said, come on, man, I'll take you for a ride. And I'm thinking, I'm going to scare this guy to death. And he got on the back of it. He said, I ain't never ridden on a motorcycle. I said, you're going to love this. <laughs> I gave him a helmet, and we shot off, and I was on a road I didn't even know. And there was an S-curve and a tunnel. And I went through that thing and didn't even know it was there, and I was going too fast, and we were wrecking. 
And I laid that motorcycle down to where the pegs were throwing sparks up. And a car come through that tunnel, and it's a one-car tunnel. And I could have kissed the woman that was sitting in the passenger seat. And we come out of that thing, and it just it was the hand of God. It, that motorcycle come out and sit perfectly up. I pulled over, and I was shaking so bad. And he said, why'd we stop? <laughs> it didn't even scare him. He didn't know to be afraid because he knew I was a preacher and he thought that was the way you rode one. He didn't know you too well. Yeah. No, he didn't. I took him back home very, very safely and got off and I, I stopped all of that stuff. And I was foolish and I was a young... Let me say, I was much younger then. <laughs> I wouldn't get on the motor. Amen. <laughs> In 2 Timothy 1 7, he said, God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And when you're where you are are supposed to be with the Lord and you're following him as shepherd, and when his you're abiding in his love, he said, My little children, abide in my love as I abide in my father's. There's something to us abiding in him where we got that fellowship that God can say. It's, it's holy boldness and trust that God's going to take care of you. Tony and I was, we, I, I just realized we've been ministering off and on together for years. We were down on uh, Cumberland Avenue preaching. Tony wanted to go there and preach. I said, let's go to a nursing home or a hospital or something. He said, no, I'm going where God got me at. And I said, okay. He said, he, he took me from this place. I'm going to go tell him. I said, all right, let's go. And... We got down there, and I was just going to listen to him. And I think at first he was going to go preach, and he couldn't find the church that we were going to or something, so yeah. we decided to go to the... And we got down there on the strip, and he said, right here's a good spot, so he preached. And when he got done preaching, a, a man come up and started talking to him, and then bang, it hit me, and I started preaching. I didn't even plan to preach. I was planning on watching him and listening to him preach, you know, pass out gospel tracts and got to do it. But there were some students there, and, and you hear the word students, and you think they can't be harmful, but these were giants, ball-playing, big men, 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 <laughs> not, not little men like us. I mean, gigantic weightlifting people and this guy was going to clean Tony's clock and I was praying for him <laughs> and if I'd done anything he'd have cleaned mine too because this is a big dude man and and I just figured we was fixing to get a you know but we take it for the Lord and there was a man that had been raised right there that was with that guy and he said you leave those men alone he said come on let's go on up the road he said you leave them men alone and he knew what it was. He knew that you say, well, what would happen? Well, I don't know what would happen. I know this. Regardless of what would happen, it'd been worse for him than it would be for us. We would have healed up. But no telling what would have happened to that man. Right. Amen. Listen, when you're trusting the Lord as shepherd, you're abiding in the love and you're following Him and all grace all grace, all strength of God is availed there to you. You're able to say, Lord, come what may, I'm sink or swim. I'm trusting you. I'm yours. God, you do with me as Job said, though he slay me, yet I'll serve him. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads if you would. I'm out of soap. I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Let me ask you, who is your refuge?